everybody and welcome to The Flute Practice. Today we are going to be looking at the five things you should never do while playing the flute. And I mean never. These are not the only five things you should never do, so please don't take this as like, okay, if I'm not doing these things, I'm perfect. There are lots of things you probably shouldn't and should do. These are just five common things that I often see in a lot of my students. Number one, one of the most common things that I see Honestly, one of the most common things that I see is smiling and playing. People that are often taught by teachers to smile and play. So usually it kind of goes like this. It's like, smile and now play. And like, if your teacher taught you this, I'm like tempted to tell you to go like find them and get their number. But, but probably don't do that. Don't do that. It's like a, I want to say it's like an old school style of teaching, but I don't think it is. To be honest, I think it's just like, and I, I hate to say this, but I think it's just a bad style of teaching because it just encourages tightness in the embouchure. It doesn't encourage flexibility. It doesn't encourage a natural released natural embouchure. I've done a video on how to release your embouchure. I've also done a video on how to start playing. So if any of you are teachers and you have, maybe you've been taught to teach this way, I'm sorry, I do not mean offense. I don't mean to direct this at you. It doesn't mean you're a bad person or even a bad teacher. I just want to maybe ask you to rethink and revisit this particular teaching methodology. Number two, and this is also something that is often taught. So this is once again, sorry guys, if this is going to make you feel like really bad teachers, those who are watching, you're like, wow, I'm terrible. You're not terrible. You're great. You're amazing. Thank you for the service you do to children across the world. Often we're taught to tighten the embouchure and just blow more air into the instrument when we are playing in the second or third octave. So it kind of goes like this. It's like tighten and then just blow harder. I'm even cracking notes there. To be honest with you, I will tend to just crack the notes because I don't actually think you can get any kind of real control like that. So my antidote to this is I want you to think about changing air direction, not just tightening the embouchure. I want you to think about getting a smaller aperture, once again, not just tightening. And we are gonna think about increasing the support and not just the airspeed. So it's the support we want to increase. You know, really the thing is, we want to think of the lips coming forward, of closing in the front, and the jaw and the lips really coming forward for the high register. So it's gonna look like this. Nice and relaxed and easy and free. No stress. Guys, if you've got problems in this area, I have done a video as well and I'm going to send you straight to that. Okay, number three on my list. Drum roll, please. This is probably one of the most common things. This is my little drums going. This is one of the most common things I see and that is people lifting their shoulders and their chest when they breathe in. So it's like, breathe in. And I see this, especially in the little kids, they have this like immediate idea, like flute breathing is different to other breathing. It's not, it's not, it just isn't, it's not. It's the same, it's the same breathing. We should be doing the same breathing. The only difference is the flute breath is a bit deeper and fuller. And there's a great time that we breathe really deeply and fully and get as much oxygen into our body as possible. In fact, it's the body's best way of getting oxygen into our body. And that is when we yawn. I've done a whole video on this lovely yawning breath. So I'm going to send you guys there. But when we yawn, we really just open up. And if this video is boring, you'll yawn nicely with me right now. So we want to think about big, expansive, yawning kind of breaths instead of tight, lifted kind of kind of breathing we just don't want that the next issue is quite an undercover one actually and often is missed and that is playing with a tight throat or pushing the sound or the air from the throat this one is very tough to identify sometimes we often find it when people we hear sometimes throat noises you can sometimes see it when there's like ex excessive tension going on here um and often the sound will be quite tight and closed and sometimes quite irregular. So, so students that do this often struggle to kind of get a really smooth sound. So you'll often hear sort of like little, like almost pushing, swelling kind of sounds in the, in the, in the actual tone. Um, 
Also losing control, very, very difficult to actually get real lip and embouchure control because this guy is trying to do all the work and take over control and he is not that good at it as it turns out, like not at all. So if you feel like you might have a problem in this area, my best, best, best solution for this is to do singing and playing. I did a whole video on this. I can link you guys to that too. Go check it out. So singing and playing for me is the nicest way to open up. Those yawning breaths I was speaking about earlier where we're really just expanding and opening are really 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 great as well um the the beautiful thing about those kind of yawning breaths is they actually set you up to support properly they really help you to expand and support the sound nicely when you open up and open up everything properly that's like the foundation for good support uh, when we're not breathing properly support is almost impossible okay the last thing that i see a lot and it's usually my first question. You walk into a classroom with me and often my first question will be, how do you stand when playing the flute? And this is a really important question because so many people stand with their feet kind of straight head on like that together, parallel to each other. And that is not how we want to play the flute because the flute is a sideways instrument. We want to accommodate for this. I have done a whole video on standing position, so I'm gonna link you guys. But just for like a quick little like diagram, I'm going to give you guys a quick little diagram. So this is how you don't want to stand. And this is how you do want to stand. So check yourself. If you are standing in an incorrect position, you are going to want to go and fix this and sort this out. And I think you'll be amazed at the difference in the sound as well. Guys, there are so many things in all of our playing and all of our teaching and in everything we do that needs work and that we need to improve on. So, you know, if you're doing any of these things, don't feel like condemned by that. Just know that there's room for improvement and that's a great and exciting and wonderful thing. If you guys feel like you would like some help with any of these things, I'm going to encourage you guys go check out my Patreon page for more possibilities to get some extra help there. And also go check out my website. I offer online lessons and you can apply there and we can chat if you would like some help, even if it's maybe just a bit of temporary help or long term or you're looking for a teacher. I've got kind of two models of like consultations more and proper lessons. Also go check out Patreon. There's lots of other nice resources there that you can use and get involved in and just a really nice community of people that really help each other out. And I love you guys. Thank you to all of my awesome patrons. You guys are amazing. Until then, everybody. Happy practicing and see you next time.